All right, ladies and gentlemen, I keep getting a lot of questions from all of you, and I'm very happy with those questions. Yet, I saw one very interesting question. That question was, which is the most important house in astrology? Well, this is because there is an inherent or rather intrinsic assumption that there is one house which is super important, which decides everything, right? Well, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's not the case. <laughs> there is no one house which is the most important house in Vedic astrology. Why? Because whenever you talk of astrology, you are talking about real life events. And uh, real life scenarios and events or other scenarios are not so simple that they can be covered by just one house. Let's take the example of health, for example. I mean, there is one house particularly for every specific area of life and that will not change. Like we have seventh house for marriage, for example, that doesn't change. But when you see at a practical level, that one house does not describe everything related to that house. It describes some primary aspects related to that house. It does not describe everything. So, for example, the seventh house can show uh, when do you get married or when do you uh, find the right spouse for you or how's your married life between you and your spouse. That's all. But it does not show how is the interaction with the family, with your children, uh, with your parents. Now, uh, in the Western culture, it may not be very important because uh, people are not staying with their parents. But in India, uh, it's very important because most of the people stay with their parents. And even in the West, up to the age of 18, the children stay with them. So even there, the second house is important, right? So therefore, and then there's the 11th house, which is the house of fulfillment of desire. So whenever you talk of most important house, you must first, first ask this question to yourself, which area of life am I talking about? So if it is marriage, for example, then there are houses like the second house, the seventh house and the eleventh house. And the second house is known as uh, Kutumbha, which means the family. And the second house includes everything. And now you could still say, but I will just see the seventh house. But even if you do that, there are, there are a thousand other factors. So for example, let's talk of health. For health, you can say which house is it? Well, maybe the first house. But is it so? Because the first house uh, doesn't show uh, doesn't show any, anything good or bad related to the health. It's just the house of uh, your body, right? But then when you combine uh, things like the first house related to the 6th, 8th or the 12th, then there is bad health. So now we know something specific. Oh, the person is not normal and there is some ill health or there is some disease. Now, is it a temporary disease, temporary ailment, or is it a life, lifelong disease? Is, is it a chronic disease or is it a surgery, whatever it is, right? And then if you talk of the fifth and the ninth and the eleventh, then these three houses uh, are the houses of good health. So then now you know, oh, this person is very healthy. This person is uh, at the peak of his health, right? So then then you can actually uh, understand in, in in the real world is this person healthy or is this person sick right because whenever somebody is coming to you for a health consultation 99 percent of the times the person is having a disease at the moment or the person has had a disease but uh, is not having that disease currently in the moment so the person wants to know will will this disease come in the future or will it never come again or if the person is already diseased they want to know when will this disease go out or will it go at all or if it doesn't go will i die or i will have to stay with this disease keeping this into uh, under control or something uh, which is not by doing something which is not very pleasurable like you know some strict exercises or strict diet or something like that so now you know specifically because if you just say oh for health i'll say first house you know first lord is exalted good health no it doesn't work like that first lord is in the um, sixth house bad health no it doesn't work like that because uh, this can change dynamically with dashas so 
if a planet is placed in your birth chart in a particular way, that has a very strong indication about that house. But supporting dashas also has to come. So suppose your Lagna Lord is in a Dustana house. Now, does it mean you will always have bad health? Well, if your upcoming 20, 30, 40 years, your dashas, your Mahadashas especially, they are in also indicating some health problem. Then this, this placement of Lagna Lord in the Dustana houses will be very amplified because now the Dasha also is speaking in the same tone. You know, otherwise, you will feel, okay, sometimes I have some problems, but uh, overall, majorly, I am fine. So, you won't feel that. So, therefore, similarly, if you are talking of profession, uh, people uh, tell me, oh, I have this plant in my 10th house. What, what career should I have? No, it's not like that. It's not just the 10th house. You got to see, so for profession, I'm talking exclusively of profession here. The second, sixth and the tenth, these are houses of Artha, wealth. But before seeing all this, you got to see the fourth house because the fourth house shows the Vidya. The fourth house shows what area of knowledge uh, is there inside you. That's what is it's not much applied knowledge. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's a bit of theoretical knowledge. So you have to see the fourth house before you analyze career. Not because that person has had a 20 year education and the person should do something in that field only. No, it doesn't mean that. There are so many thousands and millions of people who have changed their profession, which are uh, the, who take up professions which have nothing to do with their primary education or their bachelor's or master's. But in general, how... How is this person's education? What, what has this person learned? What does the person value? What does the person think is important? Is the person responsible? Can, a, can this person learn something if required? Especially nowadays, you know, when AI and all these things are taking over. So many you know, jobs are in danger. Not every, but there are many jobs which are in danger. Especially, uh, as you know, with the coming of, you know, chat GPT and all this, you know, like, I'm sure you must be aware of what I'm talking about, right? So therefore, if the person is unable to adapt to changing technologies, changing trends, changing things, then the person may have a hard time in uh, his profession because he may not be updated with the latest technologies and he may not lose his job, but he may be in a position where he's not able to move up the ladders and get better salaries. So, then when you see the fourth house, you got to see the fifth house. The fifth house will tell you what the person values in life, what the person generally likes in life, what is important for the person. That is the fifth house. Then you got to see the ninth house. How is this person's connection with seniors, with his boss, with his uh, elders in the family or in the company, right? How, how is it? Is the person uh, having good luck? by which he is supposed to get some um, fruits without working or get some guidance before he wastes 20, 10, 20 years of his life. Or maybe he is destined to figure it all out by himself, which is not which is not wrong. But uh, that's what is the ninth house. Ninth house is the house of luck because it saves around 10, 20 years of your life because it tells you what you should do and what you should not because you learn from the experience of your seniors and elders. Senior elder doesn't mean just by age, but by uh, knowledge and experience also. Somebody who is more knowledgeable, who is more experienced. Than them. That's why YouTube is so popular. What is YouTube? YouTube seems apparently is the third house, but actually it's the ninth house because you are gaining knowledge. Everybody is gaining knowledge and trying to see how they can apply that best to their life and improve it and not waste time, right? That's what uh, is about YouTube, right? Like you keep searching for different topics. Like re recently one, one person, he asked me a question that uh, as per his horoscope, you know, should he buy a house or should he rent his house? Now, if you go and search in YouTube, should, I, should you buy, buy a house or should you rent a house? There are like maybe at least 100 or 200 videos on it, right? Now, why are you seeing that video? Because you you don't want that after 10, 20 years, I realize, oh, maybe renting was better for me. Or maybe like uh, buying a house was better for me. I could have saved more money, right? So therefore, it is important that we uh, see the ninth house also when it comes to profession. And then, of course, 
we see the second house the second house tells you how good you are at holding your money have you seen some people they earn a lot of money but they can't save it what do you think uh, what, what is your uh, biggest shortcoming what is the reason why you keep losing money always what's the most frequent reason well, have you have you ever tried to track your expenses like have you ever used different softwares have you used uh, ms excel sometimes i do i keep tracking but not all the time it's not possible maybe it's difficult but i do some tracking at least so that i know how much money i spend where so therefore have you done any uh, tracking of your finances i'm eager to know and if yes which kind of softwares do you use or do you just take a pen and paper and just do it or uh, like you know the typical indian way you just remember you write somewhere and then you were like oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i know it's uh, these many thousand rupees or 100 euros dollars somewhere here there and then that's my total expense so the second house also shows calculation it's the house of finance it's the house of uh, money mathematics numbers calculations accounts uh, track records bookkeeping all these things holding anything that you hold and hoard is the second house so how good are you at that and then sixth house sixth house shows routine repetitive boring uninteresting frustrating work that you got to do every day to become successful i mean nobody likes to do everything that it takes successful every day right but can you do it always do can you do things that you absolutely hate now of course nowadays there's this trend you know like do things that you love you know do things that you are passionate about which is fine that's perfectly fine but even if you do that within that profession also there will be at least one such thing which you will absolutely despise you will not like to do that can you do that because if you don't do that you won't be successful or maybe at that pace right and six thousand also shows you know consistency okay can you do it consistently doing one day two day three days fine can you do it over a year or for the next five years ten years thirty years and then we have the 10th house the 10th house tells us what kind of a vision do we have what are the skills that we have what is my what is the roadmap that i have for this plan what's the plan 10th house the house of planning if you don't have a plan then the only plan you have is to fail right <laughs> failing to plan is like planning to fail so therefore and at the end, we have the 11th house, which is the house of, you know, destiny, good fortune and all this. You do everything, but then there is no luck. There is no 11th house. How will it happen right at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now for the profession, you saw there are so many different houses. Every damn aspect is important. Not just one house. It's not just the 10th house. I've seen people with a fantastic 10th house and a terrible 6th house. Lazy, ambitious most miserable because they have a big vision they have a big plan they know everything but then can you implement oh, i can't so it's like somebody who has a lot of ideas but never implements and a good sixth house but a bad tenth house is like a person who is very expert at implementing but has no vision doesn't know what to do but you tell him to do something it's like a typical employee you tell him to do something he does it right so therefore uh, you got to see what are the houses that are related to that particular event of life only then you will know which houses are the most important houses for that particular event of life otherwise if you just keep grazing uh, endlessly you will not come to a conclusion because uh, every real aspect of life see wh whenever you see videos like you know saturn in 10th house mars in third house they don't yield much result. Why? Because there are thousand other permutation combinations. And the third house has so many other things which are related to so many other houses in the house. Right? So, therefore, you 
you can see individual videos but you got to do a comprehensive analysis without that you will fail in analyzing the chart because you will not understand how are the energies coming together so therefore please analyze the entire chart rather than seeing individual placements alone you have to see individual placements nothing wrong with it but at the end you have to connect the dots and see where is my life taking me in every area of life only then you will understand what your horoscope is telling you otherwise it's like gambling it's like speculation oh mars in first house person is aggressive what if he's not can can you tell me what are the factors so let me see who made it till the end can you tell me can you write it down in the comments please if mars is in the first house what are three reasons can you give me just three there are i can give you 10 reasons but suppose there are three reasons why despite mars being in the first house for any ascendant you take the ascendant any ascendant why is the person not aggressive why is the person cool-headed calm-headed why you take it mongly this ascendant that ascendant the right five reasons why maybe the person is not aggressive or maybe the person is aggressive but he's not showing it or whatever it is you know please write it down in the comments all right thank you very much for your uh, time if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you like this video then please click the thumbs up and share it with your family friends and colleagues and if you want a consultation from me please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him in every house of your horoscope thank you especially the ninth house and the fifth house thank you